This is taking way too long. How long is this guy gonna walk? Just be patient. Ugh. It's so damn long. He's probably tired. For reals? This is fucking long. He might be injured. Isn't this just a huge waste of time? What the fuck is the point of this? He's just fucking with us now, right? He's getting closer. Gene, it's time. Yo, welcome to Digital Drip, a new video series of talking about fashion sense of video game characters. A little bit about them, and how I go about making them in V-Roy Studio. When I draw, I can't help myself to create interesting outfits for my characters. I tend to look up art references on Pinterest and manga too. I think I have a little bit of love for fashion. Well, I find it fun to create outfits for Kimmy to wear during my videos recently. I use V-Roy Studio to create Kimmy and the outfits. Freeroy Studio is a free 3D program for making VTubers, and it's pretty darn good for being free too. It has some issues, like when you're making your hairstyle, it will keep adding on material on the side here. It's pretty annoying, but still fun. I know this is a little bit experimental for a video series. I hope it will be entertaining and shorter content for the channel, and an ongoing series too. So I welcome you to the very first episode of Digital Drip. today's episode, I'm going to talk about the one and only top assassin in the world. Well, universe now. Travis Touchdown! Take it away, Shadow. Travis is a guy who loves everything about anime in his apartment. From cult movies, anime figures, mechs, and pro wrestling. Obsessed with the pure white lover jelly anime series. Trust me, it only exists in the Omar Heroes universe. Moe. It's amazing they took the time to make this, and this mini game in No More Heroes too. Blueberry is best girl, prove me wrong. Strawberry has better jam. Jam, you're right. Thank you, mighty kind, mighty kind of you. Nice set of pipes you got there, old man. Travis is a bit crude when he fights against his opponents in battle. I think he does it to rattle them. Man, a good fight out of them. He I may look like he cares about the win, time. but he strives for an amazing fight. fight instead. See you on the other side. He even let some live to return fight again, because he'll be stronger next time. I believe Pseudo51 named him Travis Touchdown because it sounds cool in Japanese. I wonder what it sounds like, actually. Travis Touchdown. Travis's look is based off of Johnny Knoxville from Jackass. I can see it. Also, did you know he has a Virgin Mary next to his bed? Maybe he prays for forgiveness when he goes to bed. Does that mean he's Christian? Hey everyone, No More Heroes is now a Christian game. Play this at your nearest church. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Travis is a bit of a creeper, but Instacarma hits him in the face when he's being a creeper. But also a tragic character because being the top assassin isn't what it's cracked up to be. Killing off all your rivals, enemies, and bosses, it's really lonely at the top of the ranking. No more fights to enjoy. Oh yeah, he loves yelling out dessert names and killing people too. Strawberry on the short tank. So Travis lives in Santa Destroy, home to lovely beaches. Huh. Sunny weather. Barren fields with scorpions and a store of drip called Area 51. Now, it's time to check out that drip. 
This is our fashion Konnichiwa. expert, Kimi Mamuse, the cosplaying VTuber. So, what do you have for us today, Kimi? Oh, that's right. That's part of the deal. You don't like your voice? I don't like my face. We make a pretty good team, though. Alright, let's go! Travis's touchdown is pretty much a punk rocker kind of look with a taku lemon twist. A red leather biker jacket with tiger stripes on the back. Tigers are rad. A purple bizarre jelly t-shirt with a red collar with dots. A very classic shirt, and that's the Otaku Lemon Twist. He can't help being himself in public. Blue jeans with rip and tears on the pant legs. A leather glove to protect himself when using the beam sword. A wristband of the Santa Destroy flag. And of course, the big yellow sunglasses. The aviators. Oh yeah. Well, that actually means we have to make a jacket, shirt, pants, accessories, and the sunglasses. In simple terms. Luckily, we don't have to really worry about making the textures ourselves this time. I found a 3D model with all the textures from No More Heroes Paradise. I'm going to put a link for the 3D model in the description of the video. Okay, so we need to make a baseline outfit. It's kind of like doing a sketch before a drawing. I'm going to use something like this. I'm going to use my jacket from previous times, some simple pants, shoes, and a tank top because the normal shirt in V-Roy Studio looks way too big and Travis likes his stuff very tight. I think the best place to start with this outfit is the pants. I think the pants would be the easiest because it's just two legs. So I exported the texture from v and slapped it on the Photoshop. Now you can't just simply resize the pants to be the pants. Why not you may ask? Because that would be too easy and we wouldn't have a video. Oops, did I actually write that? It's kind of embarrassing you know. So I noticed that the pants almost have the same shape as the v texture. So I tried to deform it and shape it around to fit it. That didn't quite work, so I kind of sliced each side of the leg in half and then formed it around. Once I had like the one side done, I double checked it in v and see how it looked before I started on the other side. Hey, not bad. That's pretty good. The back pocket looks a little bit too big, but for one side of the pants, it's a really great start. I repeated the same process for the right side of the pants. I went back to V-Roy Studio to double check the pants, and it looks fine. Then I thought it would be a really cool idea for the rips and tears to actually raise some holes in them, and since it's a PNG image, it will actually show the holes in the model. Haha. <laughs> Rip and tear. Now it's time to resize the pockets. I duplicated the pants layer and erased everything around it but the pocket that I want, and resize it to be smaller. Then I went back to the original layer and used Photoshop's most trusted weapon, the healing brush. The healing brush takes everything around its layer and conforms it to look like everything the same. I love this tool so much. It helps out so much with these projects. I can even use this tool to extend the white line that reaches to the pocket. It makes my life so much easier. After resizing the pockets where I want them to be and doing some finer details of the pants, it's time to move on to the belt and shoes this time. Alright, time to work on the belt. I used a skirt as a base for my belt and erased it just enough to make it look like it goes around the pants. Now I can export this texture from v and slap it on the Photoshop and this will be my outline for the belt. Now we can use this outline and we can use the belt texture that we got from the 3D model and put it on top of the outline and work around that. As soon as I finish up touching up the belt, I put it on the pants and see what happens. And it looks really cool and it was pretty easy to do. Time to go to the shoes. Well, the shoes were a different story because I actually had to create the shoes by myself. Yeah, so I used the texture as a reference and I just drew it on Photoshop. I figured it wouldn't take me too long, and then I realized I messed up and I had to flip the other, uh, the swooshes to the other side and had to fix them up and redraw. After 40 minutes of doing that, I finally got the shoes done. 
And then after I put it on V-Roid, I noticed the laces kind of looked dumb, so I erased them off. I wanted no big bow laces on my shoes and have the pants over, overlay the top of the shoes. Phew, that was a lot of work. That's something you don't want to redo. So don't forget to save. Alrighty, it's time to get back to work. Alright, let's make the shirt now. And let's make it very intense. Are you ready for the most intense shirt making of all time? Oh, in v we use a tight shirt to make the shirt. Export the tight shirt bodysuit onto Photoshop. Select the collar and only the collar to make the collar with the dots. Now we use the shirt texture. Make sure the picture is just in the right spot. Yeah, that's the spot, baby. Now we can't forget the back collar side of the shirt. Probably the most annoying part of just making the shirt, honestly. After that, we must recontextualize all the rest of the shirt. Now, we just copy the layer again and get rid of the logo in front of the shirt and just resize our texture and make sure it looks good on the entire shirt. Now, don't forget the sleeves too, kitties. Now try out your abomination and make sure it looks good on your V-Roid model. Now, it's time for the jacket of... Minor inconveniences. I mean, seriously. If there's anything about this outfit that I have to get right correctly, it will be the jacket. The jacket is probably the most important thing about Travis's Touchdown's outfit. Besides the sunglasses, of course. The jacket texture doesn't really tell me where is the jacket at. I kind of have to decipher it like a puzzle. I also used the 3D model picture reference on the right here so I can figure out how the jacket actually works. So up here will be the collar and this highlighted selected area is the side of the jacket and this piece is the back of the jacket. At the bottom of the jacket it seems like it has a belt loop kind of texture around the jacket. Now I have to figure out where the tiger stripes go. So I use my footage to find out where the tiger stripes go. They seem like to go around the collar and the back of it. And I also found out there's belt loops around his wrist of the jacket. Now I have the knowledge where the tiger stripes go. Time to apply this knowledge onto the jacket. So, uh, quick question. Can anyone tell me why Travis Touchdown really likes tigers? I tried looking up on wiki and the fan wiki and all kinds of research and I came up with nothing. Uh, does anyone know uh, why he likes Tiger so much? If you do, leave me a comment. That'd be great. Okay, I think I got all the Tiger textures where I want them to be and the sleeve textures look pretty good too. Okay, cool. I almost have it. The sleeve textures need to be shrinking down a bit and the belt loops are just way too big on the sleeves. And more tiger stripes is never a bad thing. I also want to add the zipper inside of the jacket because that's just cool. With that said and done about two hours in, it's time for the moment of truth. Oh hell yeah! This looks awesome! Alright. This looks great. All right, all I got left is gloves, bracelets, and sunglasses, and my bows. I think I can do the rest pretty easily from here on. All right, let's finish this. It's so like I said, all I got left is the gloves, and the sweatband, and the sunglasses. I decided not to do my bows because I felt the black bows would work with this outfit anyways. That way I can make the glove 
on the left side and use the band on the right side. So I take the time to make the preset glove that's already been laid out for me and just have the same color and texture of Travis's glove. Using the texture for Travis's glove and sweatband is nightmare fuel because his face likes to float around while I'm trying to do some work. Alright, just about got the glove. I just have to race a couple of holes for the belt loops for his glove. Bing bada boom, we got belt loops on the glove. We're almost done. Now it's time for the wristband. I used the same strategy as I did before with the belt. Create an outline and then make it around the outline. Now the wristband is done. Now it's time to make the sunglasses. Woohoo! B-Roy has a very interesting glasses tool maker. I don't get it, but it's useful for this situation. So we're going to use it to make sunglasses. After I find the shape of the sunglasses, now I change the lenses to yellow. Of course, you gotta add some shine to those lenses. That way it'd be extra cool. Okay, I think we're finally done with this. This looks awesome. これが何を求めているか知っていますか? Oh yeah. Let's say at the same time. Three, two, one. Photoshoot! This is Humanity, a puzzle platformer kind of game where you play as a dog that looks like a sheep oh. in you that leads people off to the edge of a cliff. Oh. Nah, I'm kidding you. The dog leads them to the light. You, the dog, can bark out directions to help out these people to get around the environment. And these gold-friendly giants named Goldie. Some of your tricks and commands are very unique. Like, long jump, float, follow, and crowd surf. I'm sure there will be more when the actual game comes out in May. Commandy reminds me of Choo Choo Rocket! But 3D and more in depth with controls and verticality and gameplay design. The controls feel so good for a game like this. So tight! I feel like it's absolutely necessary that a platformer needs tight controls, but it is a puzzle game first. The puzzles are clever to solve from what the beta has to show off so far. And I'm not going in depth with the story because the full game isn't out yet. I love the simple visuals of this game. It's so easy to understand. Overall, very beautiful to look at. Speaking about beautiful things, the soundtrack is very calming, easy to listen to while you're thinking really hard about those solutions. Like this stage for instance. You have to plan out your entire route before you start the stage to help out the people to grab goalie and get to the end of the stage without making any mistakes. If you do, you have to restart the entire stage again. It also has forgiveness as well. I accidentally forgot to add a direction for these people to go to the right direction, but they were pushing the block so hard that they pushed themselves into the right direction and it helped me clear the level. So, it's very forgiving, which is pretty cool. The game is made by the same people who did Res Infinite and Tetris Effect. Great soundtracks. Check these out. So good. Am I right?
right? Is this what hearing colors is like? Huh. Oh yeah. There's a creative stage mode like Lil Big Planet and Halo Forge mode. And maybe Super Mario Maker. But I kind of get more vibes with Lil Big Planet more because. Yeah. For creating a stage mode, it's really easy to understand the controls and fun. So much fun that I actually spent over four hours in one day while recording footage for it. It has some issues since it's the beta version, but I'm sure they will buffer that out when the full release comes out. I made this stage called Please Help Us Doggo. When I was playing some of the levels, I felt like some of the developers who were creating this game were thinking about some very unfortunate events happening to certain people. So I did it for them! So I used that in mind and made it where you help out people with internal suffering, splatting them into the ground forever until you figure out how to free them. By flipping the switch on, stuffing people into this box, throwing them into this box, solving this small puzzle full of people getting rolled on by giant iron balls. With each task that you do in this level, we'll unlock each step to the goal to complete this level. It will also unlock this wall creating a hole and you can lead all the people that you gather into the boxes and whatnot over here through the tiny hole in the wall and take them outside. And once you take them outside you can climb up on this wall and lead them to Mr. Goldie around the holes to his goal and lead the people over here to this goal to finally complete my level please help us doggo. You damn right, Vita forever. PlayStation Vita forever. Am I right? Sony, just make another one. Jeez. Hey, if you happen to see my level, please help us, doggo. Would you mind rating it five stars? I mean, I spent a lot of time on it. I mean, you don't have to. Just, it would be nice when the game comes out and get a bunch of stuff for it.
and you get a bunch of reward. You know what? Never mind. I'm just kidding. Just, but I would like the five stars. But you know, th this is a long joke. Okay. All right. All right. I'm done. All right. Bye. <laughs>
Check me out! I'm your host, Kimmy Maimusi, and the voice coming out of my body is Knuckle Master. I'm here today to show you some awesome gaming gems. Let's start the show! Enjoy! And by the way, don't smoke. Man, I love all kinds of video games, don't you? I even love bullet hell games. Wait, you don't know what a bullet hell is? Um, let me show you what I mean. Here's Death Smiles. Feeling good! Ah, what a wonderful day to play a bullet hell! <laughs> Christmas in July. Hell yeah! Santa Claus killed our grandpa. No joke. Let's go get him!
Oh, you thought I disappeared? That's because I got some ninja skills. Haha. <laughs> uh, why are your thoughts on death smiles? Pretty neat, right? Well, speaking about ninja skills, here's a classic PS2 game of being a ninja. Roll that clip. Wanna play with me? I kept myself alive by using the ninja deep sleep technique. And you show up right when our lord is under attack? While sleeping, I sent my shadow far and wide across the land. Your shadow? Yes, my shadow. And how do we know you're not just a shadow? I am Rikimaru. I am a shadow. <laughs> Next up, we got Rocket Knight, underrated platformer series for sure. Come check a look. We have a look Yeehaw! Sega!
Hey, what about me? That's weird. I guess my co-host is running lay again. Hmm. I wonder where they're at. Uh, well, I'll just roll the next clip then. She probably fell asleep on the train again. Kaboom! Let's do this! Charge shot! Now! Yeah! Now the real fun starts. Gotta do something! I fell asleep on the train. I'm late. I'm late. I'm really late. All right. Let's keep this up a notch. Let's go. I need a speed up. You fell asleep on the train again, you did. No, well, okay, yeah. Well, anyways, I got something spooky for you. <laughs> you mean spooky, right? Ooh, sparklies. No, 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 smoothie. Ugh, darn it, you got me doing it now. R r roll it.
Wow, that was pretty spooky, sis. Wait a sec. Where did you go? Take a look up here. How are you doing that? Oh, I've been playing too much grip lately. Check it. Also, can you help me get down? I'm stuck. So confusing. That was awesome how you can race on the ceiling like that. I know, right? <laughs> hey, did you notice something? You can flip the logo upside down, sideways, anyways you want it to be, and it will still say grip on it. What? Wait, what? No way, my mind has been blown into chunks? Speaking of chunks, time for Death End Request 1 and 2. But I prefer 2 because it has better setting, characters, and more focused story if you ask me. Yeah, I agree with you, girl. Play that clip. Lipstick!
today, the start of another worthless day. I get up in the morning, and I eat. The sun rises, and I eat. The sun sets, and I eat. The morning returns, bringing with it the same day. I was going to be killed by my father. I don't care. Not anymore. I wouldn't have to suffer anymore, so it's fine. I wouldn't have to stuff anything in my mouth. But I had one parting wish. <laughs> that was crazy sounding Halloween spooky sounds. I love it. Yep, but you can't beat this game with the coolness factor. Why? <laughs> Just you wait and watch. It's gonna be a one hella of surprise. Get along, little doggies! Mario Kart! Hey! That's for babies. That's for... Oh, I like these. Tasty.
Now, I'm think I think I have some mixed feelings. Yeah. What is it? So, if you're being voiceover, am I being voiceover as well? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it. You're being voiced by Shadow. I don't know if I like that. He's a nice guy. That doesn't make it any better. I'll just put your strong emotions on the side. I got you, sis. Prepare to cry with Crystar. Let's go. You bullies! I'm going to help her, even if it kills me. to make any sacrifice. Father, you punish bad people, right? Have you ever thought about if you were wrong? Wow. Hey, you know, is the Cry Mechana, is it related to Cry Star in any way? Uh, yes, Cry Mechana is technically a spiritual successor to Crystar, which is coming out very soon in, in October. Hey, the music in Crystar is really good too. I really enjoy it. I also like Sparkster. Hey, did you know the Silent Hill composer also did the music for the Sparkster game? Dang, I didn't know that. That's some mad 16-bit music right there. But you wanna know what's half a 16-bit? 8-bit. Hey, you! Who, me? Yeah, you! Are you bored of listening to the same kind of music all the time? Are you tired of... Hipsters. Living up at the park and listening to the ridiculous vintage records in the middle of the day? Uh, I guess so. Who even are you, disembodied voice? Well, I got a treat for you. Stay inside and play this on your NES or Famicom today. And listen to the amazing tracks of better than existence of fanboys itself, 8-bit tunes like... This wonderful chiptune stuff is called 8-bit music power final, and it's gonna blow your ears right off. And my favorite... Mmm, that's the power of music, baby. Well, this is all I can show you for today. 
And also, here's an amazing track list of this amazing NES cartridge. But you didn't even answer my question, buddy voice. It's called 8-Bit Power Music Final. Also, plot twist, you're a mask girl now. What? I'm a girl now? You should be thanking me. Uh, okay, cool, thanks. Okay, bye. That is truly the power of music. I wonder if they'll ever remaster it in 16-bit. Maybe 32. <laughs> Speaking of remasters, you know, I would love a remaster or sequel to the Lost Kingdom series. I love those games. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? If so, comments maybe? So I don't feel so alone? Yeah, you're totally right. I would love for a remaster or a remake of Jack Rose on Virtual Boy. Or Mega Man X Command Mission. All the other Mega Mans get a chance. Or even Star Force. I would love to see that to happen. Or... Y'all ready for a real challenge? It's time! Sweet! Yeah! What? No way! Ha! Here I come! Ha! Ha! Yeah! Tail! Okay, time to fly! Yeah! Yeah! Ha! Ready for me? Knuckle! Yo! Do you know the way? Ha! Here I come! Yeah! Bring it on! I'll show you my ultimate power! Didn't even break a sweat. Hi, sugar. Ha. Ha, ha, ha. Let's see what you got. <laughs> ah. Phew. Mm. Winning is everything. Amy! Hello! Here we go! This is the wrong room. Resistance is futile. Give me the bird. Why try to save that which is useless to you? Initiating recovery mode. Beta. Mission completed.
and knuckles 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 yeah isn't that something i really wish that sonic battle and sonic advance series were put into a collection like the mega man zero collection that would be awesome my favorite character is Ann Knuckles. Like, there's multiple uh, of them. It's awesome. What's that? It is I, Beat, the greatest, the ultimate, and I came here to show you the best game ever created. Two of them, in fact. And that game is called. Hey, what's going on? You can't just take up my show. Who the hell are you? It's Beat! You know? From Beat Set Radio? I was always more of a corn fan myself, to be honest. You know? I like corn. Sega? I need to show the world these games that I'm from Beat Set Headphones. Saving the game industry and saving the world like Neptune. Cause I'm top net. I must change your feeble mind into submission by showing this video. <laughs> Jet Set Radio!
this, this, like that, like this, like that, like this, this, like that, like this, like that, like, like that, that. I like it, I like it. took care of that problem all right i got one more video to show you before he comes back i probably should show it and wrap up this show you know he was kind of growing on me a bit not as much as corn but just a little yeah i'm gonna miss him too i'm sure we'll see him very soon hopefully all right it is time to show you the last video of this showcase. This next very game that I'm about to show you is one of my favorite PS3 games of all time. Let's do it! Did you holler for me, the amazing S? Once upon a time, a young girl, Bellwood, recedes. A mysterious letter from her lost mother saying to come to find her at a remote island named Duo. What secrets hide about Duo? Only way to find those. Speaking to the dirt. Use powers of mythical creatures to help you on your journey through the netherworld. today and I had a great time making this for you and 
and uh, let me know what are your favorite games during the showcase. Type in the comments. But uh, yeah, I hate to go, but we'll see you next time. And when we leave, we're going to play a little montage to show everything that you just saw. Alright, we'll see you next time. I am Kimmy Mamuse, and this is my co-host, Sore Mamuse. Have a good day. See ya. Bye. You ain't no match for this cute face. Your boy Clutch, and 
You probably know me from that one video. I'm gonna make a rail so big, it's gonna get us out of the- You know what, B? Why did your voice change? I'm done! What? What do you mean you're done? See you later, bitches. Where are you going? I was falling for a very long time. I had a lot of time to think about things. A very long, dark, gray, long void of nothing happening. And then I also found, strangely, quite frankly, something else was falling too. The computer. And it was awesome. I got to learn how to use it without my hands. And I also stumbled a thing called anime. I guess you can say... I fell for anime while I was falling. And then I can't even remember what happened. I guess the game decided to load a map for us to land on. But during the meantime while Beat was falling, I learned how to video edit. And all of a sudden Beat showed up along with Yo-Yo. Great. Yeah, they're good friends of mine. Beat can be a little bit bossy, and Yo-Yo's weird. But I can't say anything. I can't even move my arms. So, we're a trio. Well, if you clicked on this video, you probably want to learn something. So let's get to it. Welcome to Clutch's Fresh Q-Tips. Take it away, Knuckle Master. Hey everybody, I had some people on Reddit and YouTube and everywhere on the internet asking me how I did this effect. Out of the way everybody, graffiti artist on his way! Move it! It's alright, he only looks scary. Would you just Our heroes hunt down the monster and they send the little girl off. What a monster! So, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, here's a list of things I use personally. A good working computer, a 360 or original Xbox, a copy of the game, a video game capture card, or a HDMI converter cable, for your Xbox. And as for software, I use Adobe Premiere and Streamlabs. Now, you don't have to follow everything that I do. You can use other programs or hardware to do these things. But that's the basics of what you need. Alright, let's get to work, shall we? This is my white 360 that I like to use while recording. I don't like to use my better quality consoles especially for recording. So, I use them all the time. Sorry about the dirtiness. But it's Master Chief approved. So someone on Reddit asked me about what exactly is my white 360, like what model, what console setup, what game version I have of the game. I I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. I have no idea what which 360 it is. I know it's just the white one. It I got it from a GameStop, it's refurbished. I can so show you the serial number. Um, I would like to believe it's one of the way older ones, uh, but I have no idea about 360 model lore. So send me down a comment uh, telling me what it is. Same thing with the game copy. I'll try to find this serial number, something for it. But I just know it's the copy of the game that comes bundled with the original Xbox. So. I hope that helps you. If it doesn't, I'm really sorry. I'm trying, but I'm just learning. But this is my white 360, it's very finicky. Alrighty then, let's pop this baby into the 360. Uh oh, why my 360's not opening? Oh, right, sometimes it likes to get jammed. So sometimes you have to knock at the door, ask politely to open up. You know, like a Girl Scout asking people to buy your cookies, you know what I mean? Or sometimes you just have to hit it a little bit hard. Just, just, just a bit. Not too hard, you know? Just a nice slap on top of the head. Or a light, rhythmic-like pattern on top of the Xbox. You know, just anything to get that disc tray to open, right? 
Maybe if I just turn it off, it'll do its thing when I try to hit the inject button, right? Maybe it'll just open back up. All right, that didn't work. Okay, just a couple more taps. Maybe it will work. Oh, we got it. We finally got it. All right, just put the disc in. Okay, hopefully it will close. <sighs> it's not closing. Why is it not closing? It should just close. Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe just a light push. All right. Maybe a very gentle push should do it. Very gently. Nope. Okay. All right. Come on. Maybe I'll just turn it off and then just poke it back in. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me, right? All right. I'll just shut it back in and then turn it on and see if it worked. No, of course not. You know what? I'll just close it back in. Ah, there we go. Finally, we're good now. We're good, right? Three, two, one. Yeah, we're good, we're good. All right, let's get to work. Okay, time to set up the XR1 Pro capture card. This is my capture card and on the right side is where you want your game to be plugged in and the left side is where you want your TV to be plugged in and the type C cable plugs into the computer. Make sure you do all your updates necessary with the firmware and all that stuff. All right. Okay. So you might run into a thing called HDCP. All you have to know is it's super annoying and it stands for High Bandwidth Digital Content Protection. It's on your 360 and PS3 by default. And you need an HDMI splitter to get around this. I'll put a description along with the other devices of this video. Okay, once you get that done with, open up Streamlabs or OPS and go to your sources and open up Video Capture Device. And, put, and find your XR1 Pro or whatever capture card you're using and make sure it fits on the screen perfectly and you can see it on your screen. You might have to click on the settings to make sure it's clicked on there to find your capture card. And then once you have that ready, you click on this red button called record and you start recording your game footage. So yeah, once you're in the actual game, go to custom graffiti mode and spray down all your different sizes in a bright super green or blue. I'll show you what I mean later. Just go ahead and do it. If you're doing this on your Xbox 360, you might see some visual glitches while you're graffitiing. That's just normal for me. It might be different for you, but that's how it is for me on my 360. It doesn't do it on my Xbox, only on the 360. It's a weird visual glitch. Once you got that done, make sure you equip your custom graffitis and go out in town and record your footage wherever you want. Um, you know, maybe middle of the streets or looking at some pedestrians walking across this blue screen. Do some really fun, interesting stuff, wherever you want to do with it. Okay, on to the video editing process. As long as it has a keying out feature, you can use any video editing software. I'm using Adobe Premiere. Okay, a quick rundown of how all this works. Um, this right here are my video layers, and then underneath it are my audio layers. The things on the left are all my files that I'm dragging and clicking onto. And then on top of that, that's where I control the effects. And then to my right, or where I find the effects. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now we're going to take our footage with the blue screen or green screen. I like to use blue screen because it seems to be better if I do blue screen. And then click and drag it into place at the second video layer. Then we're going to bring our footage or image to replace the blue screen with by dragging it under video layer 2. So it will be at video layer 1. Now we go to the effects library and go to the search bar and type in key. 
and scroll down until you find Ultra Key. Click and drag it onto Video Layer 2. Then we go to Effects Library and scroll down until you see Ultra Key and use the color dropper of the footage of Video Layer 2. So this will key out or cut out the blue screen on Video Layer 2 so that Video Layer 1 will be seen underneath Video Layer 2. Pretty cool, right? So from here, you can resize Video Layer 1, how you like it to fit underneath Video Layer 2 by using the scaling effect on your effect controls, or I like to use the corner pin effect to pin each corner of the box to give it that more realistic look of the same angle of that wall of the footage. Um, yeah, let's see how it turned out. Trying to do! What do you mean, man? I mean, I have an idea. To get out of here, I'm going to upload my consciousness to a USB stick. What are you talking about, man? Pretty neat, right? I certainly hope so, but you're probably wondering, why do I do it like this? So in the game itself, there's really good lighting. And for example, like this area, where I want it to appear look like the video itself on the wall still has those shadows from those buildings. And it creates a really cool effect and it keeps you somewhat immersed in that world it's like a video playing on the wall it's pretty cool i really like how this looks okay here's another example this one's at night um you, you don't have to worry about shadows at night but also if you're using a blue screen at night well if you use ultra key it makes everything turn to a greenish color like it takes it literally takes all the blue out so you might have to worry about that if you're doing something at night in the game. You know, that's kind of weird to say. <laughs> I mean, there's night stages and day stages. It's not the game itself that literally has a time of day. You get what I'm saying, right? <laughs> Anyways, I'm just saying, just be careful when you're using the Ultra Key at 99th Street because your footage might peek through of your blue screen. That's all I'm trying to say here. So to avoid that, you might want like to play with the settings with your ultra key to try to fix it if you just did it with blue screen or you could use green screen just any bright color that will contrast it to help you to get around that problem i know this technique is not exactly like the perfect way to do this but overall it's still a fun thing to do for jet set radio future <laughs> i really enjoy doing this I really hope one day that Bomb Rush Cyberfunk will have custom graffitis so I can do this effect again. And yeah, that's about it. This is how I make those video graffitis for Jet Set Radio Future from time to time. Yeah, I really hope you enjoy my weird process of doing this. Um, sorry about the unscripted feeling of, of it all. But I hope you enjoyed the video anyways. I had a lot of fun making it. For my very loyal subscribers, we're at 225. I would not never have made it without any of you. So thank you so much for subscribing and watching my videos. <laughs>
bomb crush. Yo mama gave me some sacks of money. It's bomb rush, cyber funk. Well, since you're here right now, the new BRC crew wants me to edit their skate video for them. I told them I'll do it if they get the footage and send it to me since, you know. We're still stuck in here! Oh well, that's okay for now. Knuckmaster is here to teach you how to do video graffiti in Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Take it away, my man. Hey everyone, Knucklemaster here. So I post this image here on Reddit and Twitter. <sighs> I mean X now, whatever, right? Multiple people asked me how I made this, since the last video did surprisingly well to the point where I was even questioning it. And then someone from Reddit also subscribed to me on my channel for this video as well, and told me to try some panoramic shots too. So I felt like I had to do another video. I also replied to them saying, I am the Knuckle Master. That doesn't mean anything to them. Come on, really? Why did I type that? No pressure, right? I can do this, right? Anyways, so I'm gonna show you how to mod your own custom graffiti and make video graffiti in Bomb Rush Cyberfunk on the PC. Are you ready for this? Here we go. This time we need a good working computer, of course. A copy of Bomb Rush Cyberfunk on PC, OBS or Steam Labs to record your footage, and any image and video editing software that you like to use yourself. I'm gonna use Adobe Premiere and Photoshop. I'm sad to say this, but as far as I know, you can only mod on the PC release of BRC. Maybe later down in the line, modders will figure out how to do it on consoles, like the Fallout games. There's one more thing we need for this. We need this program called Ube. I hope I'm saying that right. This stands for Unity Assets Bundle Extractor Avalonia. <laughs> I don't know what tectonic plates shifting around the earth supposed to mean for this, but I... This will mod the game for us. I think this program is used in most games that use the Unity engine. I didn't know about this until someone mentioned it to me and sent me a link on Twitter before I published the previous video. Thank you so much for showing me this, Zeta. I really appreciate it. I'll put down the links that I use for Ube in the how-to guide in the description of this video. I'm on the 6th edition of Ube, so if you're watching this later, I would recommend downloading the latest version. I'm on Windows, so I'm downloading the Windows version. It will come in the zip folder and you might need a program that unzips the folder for you. You can use something like WinWar for this. Now we extract all the files into a new folder. I'm going to put it into the downloads tab so I can find it easier. Now it's time to set up our custom graffiti for BRC. Let's do it. Go to the folder where your program is at and select ubay.exe. A small window will open, then go to file, open, go to where your Steam games are located. Mine are in my hard drive. Go to the Steam Library folder, then Steam Apps, then Common, then Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, then Bomb Rush Cyberfunk underscore data, then Streaming Assets, then Assets, and finally scroll down until you see Graffiti. Open it up. If you happen to not know where your Steam games are located, then you can use the search bar and type in Bomb. That should pull it up. Or, you can also use Steam to help you find the path too, by going to Settings, then Properties, then Install Files, and hit Browse. This will open up where the game is located. After you go through the File Path system and select Graffiti, click on Info. This will open up a bigger window called Assets Info. This will show all textures, shaders, and material of all graffiti in the game. Since we're just changing only the image files around, let's go to view and filter it where it only shows the image files. By clicking off the check marks except for texture 2D, then close the window. Now it only shows the PNG files. Okay, so there's four different sizes, extra large, large, medium, and small, but smalls are unique to each character. I'm not gonna lie, but I don't like the rival gains graffiti in the game, so I'm gonna replace those and they're really easy to find here. They have them separated by rival gain names and for each size too. The next step is now picking the graffiti that you want to replace. Let me show you an example here. Go to this file here and go to plugins. The plugins window will show up and you can choose between export texture or edit texture. Exporting the texture can be saved into your computer and you can see what it looks like before you replace it. Editing the texture will replace the texture. I like to export the texture onto the computer first so I know what I'm replacing in the game. 
Then I go to my newly exported image and right click, then I go to open with, then Photoshop, or your weapon of choice for image editing. If you do it this way, you don't have to worry about your resolution size for each one. Edit your graffiti texture however you like. I'm going to make green screens and blue screens with mine to make video graffiti, just like the previous video. After you get all your new custom graffiti ready to go in your folder, then we go to edit texture in the plugin window. Then OK, then go to load, pick your custom graffiti of the right size. Now we click save, and then go to file in the big window, click save, then it will pop up a window saying you need to close the big window first for it to truly save and replace. So click OK, then close the big window, then go to the smaller window, then go to File, and click Save To. Now close it. I hope I explained that pretty well. If you did this incorrectly by closing the smaller window first, it won't work. So put it in this way. Close the big window, then the very small window. So big, then small. All right, let's go test it out first and see if it worked or not. Cool, it seems to be working. So I'm gonna take the time to replace what I need to replace here. Then go around in the game and spray down the entire city with green screens and blue screens. Let's put in the work now. It's my first time doing this with BRC, so I didn't know which color was going to be better for this project. So I did both. It seems I get the same results like I do with Jet Set Radio Future. So both colors are good so far, just depends where you're at in the game. Okay, after I got all of Varsum Hill re graffitied and some parts that I wanted to try out, then I took some time to record some footage. Time to edit the footage I just got. So last time I talked about Ultra Key to make those video graffiti and Jet Set Radio Future. Pretty much we're going to do the same thing here. Okay, let's review how to do Ultra Key real quick. Take the footage with the green screen and put it onto Video Layer 2. Then take what you want to replace with your green screen onto Video Layer 1. Go to the search bar on the right and type in Key to find the Ultra Key effect. Drag down the effect onto video layer 2 and go to the left side for the effect controls and scroll down until you see ultra key. Then use the color dropper on the color green. After that make sure video layer 1 fits underneath video layer 2 by scaling or using the corner pin effect. Thinking about corner pin effect, this person from reddit said to try to do some more panoramic shots this time around by using corner pin effect. So let's go more in depth with it. To do this effect go to the effects on the right side Use the search bar and type in pin to find the corner pin effect. Drag it into video layer 1. Go to the left side into the effect controls and scroll down until you see corner pin effect. Then four round blue light crosshairs will show up on each corner of said video, image, or GIF. Adjust them to your liking in the video. And video layer 2 might be moving around for video layer 1, so that means it will have to keep up. To fix this, we need to fix the positioning when video layer 2 moves around. So in the effects controls, we need to go position, scale, and corner pin and click on the stopwatch icons. This will create a keyframe. Then go further into the timeline to readjust the position, scale, and corner pin. Keep on adding more keyframes in the timeline until it looks correct. I'm not gonna lie, but this took me a good 30 minutes and it's really such a pain in the butt to do here because Premiere doesn't like it when I do this making this very hard for me to see what's going on. At the last couple of seconds in this part where the kitty girl says hi to Red, Hello. I made it scale up where he goes around the corner because I kept getting error messages popping up. <laughs> Maybe the computer thought it was too epic or really bad. I don't know. 
Well anyways, let's see how all this hard work turned out. I hope it turns out really good. Oh yeah, if you happen to see a lot of footage of Belle from BRC, that's probably because Clutch has a huge crush on Belle, so sorry about that. Hey, no fair. Especially that winter outfit, she kinda looks like Ray from Evangelion. Dude, just show the fuck. Where's the hat? I want to buy some stocks. I don't know. Gone. Yeah, I really want to invest on 2D women. You know, to help to build them up. Wait a second. You don't mean you actually lost the hat, did you? Oh man. I did not lose the bucket. It was stolen. By who? By that hamster cheek pinching coffin dodger. Who? So you want a <laughs> jumping flash? No. No one's playing Jumping Flash. Everyone's playing Armored Four. Dark Souls of this shit. Oh, okay. I'll see you next time. Nah. Welcome to the fourth episode of So You Wanna Plat, a series about the hardest, easiest, and the most mad hopping trophies to get in any game. This time our game is Jumping Flash, a unique first person platformer PS1 game? What? Yeah, recently PlayStation decided to release some classic games on the PSN store, and you play them by subscription or purchasing them. Believe it or not, some games have a trophy list. Sadly, Tekken 2 doesn't have trophies, but some have platinum trophies, which is pretty awesome. It breathes new life into some of these classic games. I personally never played the Jumping Flash series until now, and I had a great time playing the first game. I find it oddly addictive to play. I never played anything quite like this, especially that first person view of platforming around with a big open level design. It was so much fun that I felt like making a video about it. So I welcome to you the So You Wanna Plat Jumping Flash episode, and I hope you enjoy it. And maybe give this game a little hop after this video. Well. Let's get into it. This time, there's only 14 trophies to get the platinum. Wow. Really? Okay. So, there's no bronze trophies. That's a bit weird. Does that mean this game is really hard? Like, HARD. Alrighty then, four silver and 10 gold trophies. Well, just from looking at this trophy list, it must be hard, right? So, then how long does it take to plat it? One to two hours? No, no, no. There's no way that this game is only one to two hours to plat. That means it's a very short game. What the hell? All right then, let's do it. First up, we have Bonanza Bonus. Find a bonus stage. There's three stages per world, and the first stage always has the bonus stage. This is not that hard at all. There's a bonus stage right in front of your face in world one. 
Okay, next up we have safeties is always on. For this trophy, don't fire any weapons by pressing square or circle button. You'll get it after you clear stage one. Easy, right? Here's another one. It's called Don't Rust. In stage 1-2, you'll find a hot spring. Take a long bath and relax. And there you go, another trophy done. Let's go to the next one. Next up, we got air time. Bounce on enemies at least five times before touching the ground. You can do this very easily on world one on stage 1-3. Yeah, go jump on that dragon, Robin. And while you're doing that, you'll probably be achieving the Falling with Style trophy. Be in the air for six seconds or more. Easily can be done with the dragon as well. Tell that dragon who's boss, Robin. You probably jump on that dragon so much that you squished it flat like a pancake. Now you got Stomping Flash. Defeat a boss without firing any projectiles by pressing square or circle. None of that. Cool, let's keep going. Okay, so here's things to get a little bit tricky now. This trophy is called Doom Rooms. Find three hidden passages in World 2. So in 2-2, you need to find three hidden passages. So in this well was a maze, but it's a very short maze, so don't worry about that. You're looking for doors with this guy's face on it. So when you start, the first door will be to your right. The second hidden passage door, as soon as you drop into a hole, there should be a door near you. Look around for a door. And for the final door, when you get to the sand room and going down some stairs, it should be to your left. And that's all the doors. Nice, now we're halfway done. All right then, now we got can't hop, won't hop to fear a boss without jumping once. Do the complete opposite of stomping flash. Fire all your guns at the boss and kill him fast. The easiest bosses you probably can do this trophy for is the world one boss, the dragon, or the world four boss, the turtle. Yeah, fill him up with lead. All right, next one. Okay, we're about to get to the final stretch here. This next one is called No Balloon Was Safe. Find and complete all bonus stages. There are six worlds, so that means there's six bonus stages to go with. It. All bonus stages are on the first stage of every world. So we need to find and complete every bonus stage to get this trophy. To complete a bonus stage, you need to pop all the balloons in the bonus stage. Don't worry if you mess up, you can use the rewind feature. Okay, let's do it. I think the first bonus stage is near a blimp or right in front of your face in the beginning on top of the hill. Okay, the second bonus stage is near the big pyramid and you should see a column. Jump on the column, you should see the bonus ring and jump in. For bonus stage three in world three, look for some fans on the outside of the map and float on top of them until you find the bonus ring. For bonus stage four, find the exit pad, look around, you should see the bonus ring from there and jump inside. For bonus stage 5, if you see a crank and a skyscraper with a slant to it, jump on top of it. It might take a little bit of work to get to it, but you can find it that way. For the final bonus stage, it's like in the way back of the level, so jump on some towers and you should see it. Alright, that's it for finding all the bonus stages. The bonus stages themselves are not particularly that hard, especially during the first run of the playthrough of the game. You can do it! While you're doing the bonus stages, you're probably gonna end up with this trophy called More Cat Than Rabbit. It's pretty much having nine lives. If you're missing a couple of lives, you can pick up some lives in other stages. When you also finish the bonus stages, you might earn this trophy as well. The Millionaire Hair. Earn a seven digit score. Three more trophies to go. Let's do it. This one's called I'll Face Myself. Bounce on Dark Robot's Bunny Companions 15 times. So during this boss fight, you jump on his minions 15 times. Pretty easy. Okay, the next one's called Bounce on the Baron. Defeat the Baron without firing any special weapons. So don't press that circle button during the final boss fight. The final trophy to get the plat is called Aloha Aloha. Acquire all jet pods and defeat the Baron. No cheating, just means beat the game, quite literally. And yes, that means you can use your time powers during your first playthrough. Yahoo! You finally got the plat! How do you feel? Only one to two hours of your time wasted with Jumping Flash. I mean, it's been a really fun plat, huh? You're probably asking yourself, why did I make this video for Jumping Flash? Well, I enjoy Jumping Flash so much and it was such a unique experience that I feel like it should have more attention to it. 
I even enjoy it so much that I even bought the second game on my PS3. And it's really fun too. I just wish the games were just a little bit longer though. They also make up for it by replay value. You get a different ending for being the game again, like the true ending. Kinda like Ghosts and Goblins, you know? Well, I enjoy this game a lot. Um, the Platinum? I kinda wish it was a bit more challenging in some areas. Also, I don't like the idea of you just beating the game once, even though that has a true ending. I mean, it's not that long of a game, so what's making them not giving you a trophy for completing the game on extra mode to see the true ending, right? And I know it's gonna be really weird for me to say, but I think there's just too many gold trophies in it. It's kind of odd because some of the trophies, you literally do nothing to earn a gold trophy. It makes no sense. So, yeah, uh, it's not really that challenging, and I kind of wish it was a bit more challenging, and it doesn't explore all the game mechanics like I wish it did. So, I think I will give this plat like a 6 out of 10, because I enjoy it so much as a game, but as a platinum, I just wish I felt like I actually earned the platinum. I feel kind of dirty, you know what I'm saying? Well, anyways, I'm gonna take a shower now because I feel dirty. We have breaking news on the recent suspect. Now this just in, police uh, officers in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, were asking people to be on the lookout for a man who robbed the store. And I think, yeah, I think we do, we do have his description. Can we take that? Let's take his description. Okay, this is the guy. They're, uh, they, wanted, they wanted people in Pennsylvania to be out on the lookout for. He's got, uh, well, he's got a nose and some hair that goes like that, and he was, uh, he was wearing a hat at the time of this particular, particular crime. He's got kind of a chin that comes down to a, almost a point. Yo, was that the same tail tug and wash out mother hugger that took our hat? A knock at the door. He's back! He's back for my shades! Gotcha now! Let's go! All right! Well, thank you again for saving my daughter, Mr. Sonic. Hey! No problem! Anytime, Big Mama! Oh, you're so funny, Mr. Sonic. Is there anything else I can do for you? You know, it'd be nice if you can help me buy my own game because I'm broke and all I do is run around and, and save the world and stuff. And I have no pockets. Here you go, ma'am. Alright, thanks, Miss Big V. I can't wait to play with myself. Hashtag not sponsored. See you next time. Vroom, vroom. <sighs> oh, hey, Knuckles. What you- That was for last time, Porcupine. Ah, just what I needed. I need you to help me to make my son. Oh, my. So straightforward. Come with me. There's no time. This is Knuckle Master. And I'm back. I've been away for a week, but I'm back to kick some butt with this new vid. I shall find all the lost pieces of Knuckles' son to help him to build his bloodline back together. You want to play with blocks? Well, you got the right guy. Oh, good! We made it just in time! Just in time for what? This Knuckle Master guy said he can help me build my son! Oh, that's not what I had in mind. I thought I was gonna be like Stacy's mom. Nope, you're straight up vanilla. Please help me, my hands are too big. Ah, oh, weird plum to have. Okay, I'll help you then, Knuckles. Oh, thank you so much. Come with me, he's about to build the bricks. 
Hey everyone, Knuckle Master here. Sorry about the weird intro, but I figured I should make it fun since this video is gonna be short. So from time to time I like to build gun to mono kits, especially to get away from the computer, that way I'm not straining my eyes so much. I have this huge backlog of Gundam model kits and video game characters that I would like to build. I also found my nano block knuckles. I thought I lost him, but I had this like almost a year ago, and I figured it'd be a great time to build it since the new Sonic game is coming out this week. I never built anything with nano blocks before, so let's see how small these nano blocks are. Wow, these blocks are actually really small. <laughs> oh yeah, if you're wondering why I'm doing Knuckles first, because he's like my favorite Sonic character when I was younger. Yeah, he was like my favorite color and he was strong and stuff. And you know, I just thought Knuckles was always cool. And before you even ask in the comments, that's not why I'm called Knuckle Master. There's a whole story behind it, but that's a story for another day. All right, let's check out the instructions. There's 15 steps, 160 pieces, and two out of five bricks. Um, that's kind of weird. Oh, it says level. Okay, two out of five difficulty of level of building knuckles. Okay, cool. Don't be afraid since there's some Japanese here and there, but it's pretty easy to follow. Let's get started, shall we? <laughs> Show, look at this tiny, tiny, small piece in the palm of my hand. This is really small, <laughs> very small. I got big hands. I don't know if I can actually build this myself. Well, I'm gonna give it a shot. Since it's October, time to play some spooky music to go with this. Hey, not too bad. Yeah, it's kind of interesting with the layer system with step one and two, with the faded parts. I'm not used to that. But overall, not too bad. Let's carry on. I know that it's here, I can sense it in my feet. The great emerald's power allows me to feel. I can't see a thing, but it's around somewhere. I'm gonna hold my head, cause I have no fear. Does this look like Knuckles to you yet? <laughs> We're getting there. Also, I think I messed up on the back of the head. It, it's an oval shape instead of a rectangle shape. And it's locked in there pretty tight. So I'm going to try to use a knife to pry it off. Kids, you gotta use the proper tools when building with nano blocks. Don't use a knife like this, dumb dumb. Ah, cut my finger. That's no good. Don't use a swift army knife to pry bricks away. Use tweezers instead. If you can't find tweezers, get up and go find them instead of being lazy. Or ask your mom around. Stay safe, kids. Getting hurt by a knife is no joke. Gotta keep going, though. Had to back him up with a fist metal crack I'm hearing someone saying you a chicken, don't be scared. It had to be the wind, cause nobody wasn't there. I searched and I searched as I climbed up the wall. And then I yeah, this is more like it. Now we starting to look like Knuckles. Would you believe it or not? We're three-fourths the way done. All we gotta do is finish his body, legs, and arms. Let's do it. And then I started to fly, I went in deep. Let it get to me, I'm just gonna creep. I know that it's here. I sense it in my feet. The great emerald's power allows me to feel. I can't see a thing, but it's around somewhere. Awesome, we're almost done. All I gotta do is the legs and the tail and this weird spinal cord thing. Finish him! Fatality! Watch me, he got there. Awesomeness, he's finally done. Look at him, he's so tiny and cute. This is really fun. I really like the nano block thing. But I do have to say, it's very, very, very fragile to mess with. Especially when you have big hands like me. You know what they say about big gloves, right? Big knuckles. Thank you for helping me make my son. Um. Yeah, no problem at all, Knuckles. He's kind of cute, you know. Where are you going to name him? I'm going to name him Chuckles. Really? Here I come, rough 
than the rest of them, the best of them, tougher than leather. You can call me Knuckles. Unlike Sonic, I don't chuckle. I'd rather flex my mother. Chuckles, no! Oh, Knuckles. We can always make a <laughs> <laughs> Round one. Fight. You both have digital drip. Wait, is is there something that, that I said? <laughs> oh, well, welcome to the second episode of Digital Drip. It's been a while since I did one of these. My first video in the series has gotten 1k views now. That's amazing for a weird idea about video game characters' fashion choices. So, let's make another one. I give you Digital Drip Halloween Edition. Happy Halloween, everyone from yours truly, Knuckle Master. Okay, so it's been a while since I did the last Digital Drip video. Let me explain the concept again for those who are new here. This is the series where I talk about the fashion sense of certain video game characters. I talk a little bit about them and some fun facts here and there. Then, our fashion expert, Kimmy Mahamusi, will try to make the outfit in V-Roy Studio. V-Roy Studio is a free program that you can use to make VTuber models and outfits. It has its limitations, but that's what makes it fun to figure out in the program. Also, I use Photoshop for texturing to make the outfits. She uh, doesn't really like her voice, so I dub over her lines and she acts my face for me because I'm not comfortable showing my face. Kimmy is my VTuber model and pretty much my mascot for my channel. She also has a sister named Sorei Masamune and she likes to draw and has her voice dubbed by someone else too. Now, since you're caught up to speed, today's episode is about two succubuses, or two succubi, two suck, you, you know, two succubuses named Morgan and Liv from Darkstalkers. When it comes to video games that make me think of Halloween, the first one that really comes into my mind will be Darkstalkers. Yeah, sure, you can say Silent Hill, Resident Evil, but those games don't really show various horror monsters legends like, you got like vampires, mermaids, Chinese hopping vampires, werewolves, mommies, mommies, zombies, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Incubus, undead samurai ghosts, ancient robots, kawaii bee girl, monster hunter, a little girl that's horribly terrifying to other monsters in the universe, alien demon from a different planet. Wow, this animation is so unnecessarily beautiful. Secret shadow creature, puppet girl, Frankenstein. Monster. Aha, uh -huh, you thought I messed up like everyone else in the world. I just got very, very oh, yeah. Damn. distracted. Damn, boy. Damn, boy, he thick. Boy, that's a thick ass boy. And finally, Succubus. If you don't know what Succubus is, then, um, well, they're kind of like vampires, but instead of feeding off of blood, they feed off, well, you know, cat and the bees thing or you could just ask your mom oh whoa wait whoa what's that over there um dark suckers is a fighting game series from capcom and i'd be very surprised if you don't know who his morgan is because she is everywhere especially crossover fighting games like capcom versus marvel capcom versus marvel 2 capcom versus marvel 3 and the dreaded capcom versus marvel infinite oh my god let's play again sometime Oh my god! But hey, Tatsunoku vs. Capcom is pretty rad. Or that one Neo Geo fighting game called SNK vs. Capcom. Yeah, maybe sometimes she likes to be in the puzzle game, like Super Puzzle Fighter. And she also makes many appearances in JRPG crossover games as well, like Namco Cross Capcom or Project X Zone or Project X Zone 2, and many other appearances. Morgan is everywhere. She used to be like the old 2B of our time. She used to be 2B back in our day, but 2B is literally everywhere nowadays. I put that on everything. If you're right not 
I'm sure if you're at a video game or anime convention too, I will guarantee that someone is cosplaying as Morgan or Liv from Darkstalkers. If you didn't see them yet, then they must have transformed into a different outfit or person with their wings. Morgan has a craving for exploring the human world because she usually is locked up in her castle because of her master. And that's why she's in many crossover games. When feeling strange strong powers, she has to go check it out because it makes her very excited. Morgan is pretty much an anti-hero, but very confident and sexy. I'm not a total expert of the Dark Stalker series, but I'll try my best to give you some great information about Morgan and Liv. So let's check it out. First off, let's we'll start with the star of the show, Morgan. The very sexy, confident, badass succubus that transcends time. During Darkstalker's development, people say that Morgan was going to be a cute vampire and Felicia the cat creature was going to be the sexy design for the Darkstalker game. Then someone said you should make Morgan a succubus since we already have a vampire character in the game. So they switch out the design ideas but Morgan as a sexy succubus and Felicia being the cute cat girl instead. I can't help to think that Morgan still kept some of her vampire roots from her original design aspect. She got her vampire wings still and bats on her tights. But I have one slight problem. Have you seen Felicia in Darkstalkers? Um, she literally has no clothes but some fur on her skin. Morgan's soul is split into three parts. Why, you may ask? Well, her father felt a very strong power within her when she was a child. So being fearful of her unrelenting, unknown strength as a young child, he decided to split her soul into three parts, hoping when she becomes an adult, she can control her powers a lot better. One third is with Morgan, of course. The second third is with her father, and eventually he dies and it goes back to her. And the last third of her soul becomes Lil in Dark Soccer's 3. I didn't know this until now, but Morgan is from Scotland, believe it or not, and has a complete accent to boot in the later games. Check it out. Don't be scared. How do I look? Thank you. See you again. Her voice reminds me of Mia from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I love you, Rex. Yes. What? Oh, it's so sweet. It's finally happening. Rex. It's with the best girl. Mia, I love you too. I love you and all you guys. Bruh. Oh, are you kidding me, Rex? Come on, you can't do that. You, you can't do that to her. You just ultimately friend zone her forever, dude. I'm strong and I'm bomb harder and slaughter the common man. He has triple ballin'. I can't believe he actually did. Well, Morgan can transform several body parts and wings into different types of weapons and tools in battle. Also, she can make a mirror version of herself for a special move that will decimate your opponent's health bar. I took the time to look up Morgan's name and what's the meaning behind it, and it means Phantom Queen, often known as the God of War in the Offerin legend. You know, like King Offer, usually symbolizes as a crow and can transform and also has healing powers too. Neat. Now it's time to talk about Liv, Morgan's sister, one part of her soul, and the other half. I'm not going to lie, but I like Liv a little more than Morgan. Maybe it's that closer to the heart personality vibe she gets off. Kai? I love her moveset too. Stylus, dangerous, rhythm game special move. <laughs> Adorable. Leo's first appearance is in Dark Stalkers 3. Her main goal is wanting to feel complete, looking for a body, and Jedha promised her a body if she brings him souls. You know, like for his art school project, I guess. In Morgan's ending in Darkstalkers 3, Liv finds Morgan and they have a final fight. Morgan wins the fight, Liv asks Morgan to live inside of her to feel complete because she's actually one part of her soul. Morgan fuses with Liv and becomes whole. When Morgan becomes whole, she has a brighter outlook on life thanks to Liv's part of Morgan's soul. Time to name research Liv's name. It means to belonging to the night, a feminine word for demon and also Adam's first wife's name, but it doesn't appear in most common versions of the Bible. I feel like Liv doesn't act super evil for this name though, or she acts innocent for fun? Yeah. 
but I don't really see it at all. She acts completely opposite from the meaning of her name. One of the earliest idea for Liv was to make her gender ambiguous, being up for interpretation to each player. Kinda like knights from Sega, and be an angel type and be Morgan's older sister with light powers. Well, at the time, they felt like there were too many angel type characters at the time of the game's release. I'm having a hard time believing that, to be honest. Um, message me in the comments about if there were a lot of angel type characters back in the day, during PS1, Sega Saturn, you know, that kind of stuff. I am hyper curious to know about a lot of angel type characters back in the day. I, I just can't believe it. Really. So they got around changing ideas around for her to be a part of Morgan and being a younger sister. But they kept Liv having light powers, while Morgan's having the dark powers. Kinda like Rio and Ken from the Street Fighter series. <laughs> Liv may not have many appearances like her big sister Morgan, but she does appear in some games like Tatsunoku vs Capcom in one of Morgan's special moves. She does appear in Cross Edge too. I haven't played it myself, but it's a JRPG game and another crossover game with multiple characters from Namco, Capcom, and ID Effect. That's pretty cool. I might need to check it out sooner or later. If you already played it, let me know in the comments. I would like to know. I feel like there wasn't a whole lot of information about Liv because she kind of only appears in one main game called Dark Stalkers 3. So here's a fun fact from me about myself. This is my favorite color palette for Liv. The orange and the letter royal blue look combination of colors is so vibrant. I love this combination. I, I use this palette swap all the time while playing Dark Stalkers 3. Oh yeah, Liv also appears in Morgan's ending for Super Gem Fighter mini mix. Taking away a title from Morgan from the most beautiful woman on the planet. Yeah, in Morgan's story, she actually gets her butlers to take pictures of beautiful women. As she's going for the pictures, she gets so mad by finding a picture of Chun-Li that she decides to go off and tries to defeat her herself to become the most beautiful woman on the planet. During Morgan's inning, Liv takes the cake by being so cute that she's the most beautiful person on the planet. I also find it really funny that Morgan calls Liv a flat chested girl. If you pay attention real close, she also appears third in the credit sequence as well. Well, that's a little bit about each character. Now it's time to make these outfits in V-Roid Studio. Meet our fashion expert Kimi Mamamuse. Say hi Kimi! Konnichiwa. Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't like your voice, I don't like my face, so let's make this outfit happen, right? SI, SENI wa. Okay, well, when it comes to Morgan and Liv, I find these characters not only iconic to fighting games, but representing video games and Halloween as a whole. Bat wings on the head is such a cool idea. Can't forget something like that in years. The tights and leotard combo is a double kill. My mind too. The feather sometimes fur around the chest area gives the character a unique feel of innocence and charm when they experience excitement in their lives. Wings are usually placed on top of the back for most characters but with Morgan and Liv, they're placed on the lower back for the victim's eyes to be attracted to certain areas of their body. Or use their wings to transform into a nurse. Hello, nurse. Last but not least, the high heel boots while doing combat gives them sheer amount of confidence in battle. It may be not practical effect for a battling, but it won't matter because you're still getting your butt kicked by them. These two succubi are forced to be reckoned with and will be fondly remembered probably for the rest of time. Enough talk of the two beautiful succubi. Now it's time to make our outfits. So first off, we're gonna start off with Lilith because I like her more. I do love Morgan too. I feel like I can have a cup of coffee with Morgan and have a great time. But I'm pretty sure that Lilith would play Sonic Shuffle with me without me begging, of course. Is that, is that all we want in life? Someone not only to hold on to, but someone to play video games with forever? Or that's just me then? So, that's Okay, well, um, let's get back to the task at hand then. Okay, well, here's the list of things that we need to make for Lil's outfit. A leotard with a diamond cut on the chest, tights, sleeves, heels, 
fetters. As for bat wings on the head, I'm gonna make Kimmy's bow as the bat wings instead. And finally, wings on the back. Alrighty then, you ready to get started? Let's go. Okay, in V-Roy Studio, grab yourself a bodysuit to start with. All right, so we're gonna use the bodysuit as a base, and you're gonna grab a brush in V-Roy Studio and start outlining the leotard. Make sure your outline is above the bodysuit layer. That way you can start erasing things in the bodysuit layer with the diamond shape. Having a reference picture really helps the process of getting the shape down. As for the back side, the leotard goes between the cheeks like a big wedgie. Ouch. Huh, well, once we have the shape of the leotard, export what's left of the bodysuit and save it onto your computer. And go to file, then right click to open with whatever photo editing tool you have. Now the time to color our texture. I like to create a layer on top of the original texture just in case something doesn't work. Select the original layer, then click the new layer on top of it to color it. I'm going to use a gradient tool from dark blood red to a brighter rose red to the top of the leotard. When you get it to your liking, turn off the visibility of the first layer before exporting the new leotard texture. That way it doesn't have those white lines on it. Put it back in V-Roy Studio and see how it turns out. Looking good so far, right? Time to make the bat stocking and sleeves, create another bodysuit, and of course, make it tight! Because they're tight, baby! The sleeves are pretty tight, tight too! Gee, how many times are we going to say tight tights? <laughs> Say that three times fast. Tight, 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 tight. Okay, the sleeves are about chest high, and you can use the same technique what we did with the leotard. When you get to the near the hand area of the sleeves, the sleeves go up around the middle finger and under the palm of the hand. Make sure your stockings are underneath the leotard and it's not clipping through, but if it is, you can erase the stockings inside of the leotard. Do you think you got the shape of the tight tights in the sleeves? And then go ahead and export the texture and color it like last time. This time I'm going to use only one color. If you want a specific color for your outfit, you could bring up your reference picture and use the color dropper tool to get the exact color. As for the bats on the tights, here you can draw a bat, or if you're bad at drawing, then you can take an image of a bat and change it the lightness all the way black to create a silhouette. Then I cut mine in half and drew it more cartoony, then made the bat a darker blue compared to the tights. Once I have one half of the bat done, I copy the half and flip it horizontal to make the bat symmetrical. Made little cute little eyes for it too. Now we have a bat, time to copy and paste the bat on one side of the stockings, so the bats on the stockings don't usually go past the upper fives of the character. So you got one side of the stockings done and then you can pull all the bats into one layer by converting it into a smart layer and then copy and flip it to the other side. Check it out in Vroid Studio and see if you like it. If not, then go back to fix it until you like it. Don't be afraid to do trial and error every once in a while. You can use the brush tool on top of the stocking layer to help find locations where you want to place those bats. After some time to readjust the bats on the stockings, now we're getting somewhere. Here's the easiest part of the outfit, the heels. Get yourself some boots and use the slider tools to make the heel boots. Then erase the boot to give a slope curve. No need to export to color it, just go to the base color of the boot and use the color dropper tool on the leotard to match the red color for your boots. Oh yeah! For the feathers, I use a t-shirt on top of the previous two layers. I erase the shirt layer and create an outline around the sleeves and chest areas. Time to export our outline to the photo editor. I go to the internet and find the feather PNG image and keep copying and pasting around the outline until I have enough feathers to feel satisfied. I put the feathers back in Feedroy Studio and then erase on top of the feathers to make an edge for the outfit. All right, two more things to make. We're on the final stretch now. Here we go. I'll show you how to make the bat wings on the head later, but I'm going to change Kimmy bows into bat wings instead to give them a difference between them. I opened up my bow texture and take the bat wings off of Lilith's head just one side. Then I lay on top of the bow layer and make sure the wings fit into the bow area and check it out. Well, it's backwards, so let's flip them around. There we go. Then I changed the basic ribbon color to red, of course. Alright, finally, the wings on the back. Might be challenging to do, but I'll try my best. This is how I made the wings on the back. I took a dress and marked it where the wings should go. I reused the wings from Kimmy's bows and placed them on the marked areas, like this. 
using the slider tools for resizing the dress slash wings was trial and error again. Keep going until you like it. Well, my wings don't really connect to her back, but from looking from the front and the side, you can't really tell at first glance. I'm sure there's a hundred different ways to do this, but this is how I did it. Overall, I'm happy how this lift outfit turned out. Actually, I love it, and I hope you love it too. Oh yeah, don't forget to clean up your textures too and save your file. Now we still have to make Morgan's outfit, but no worries, we're pretty much done already. All right, now it's time to make Morgan's outfit. Well, Kimmy doesn't have the body type for Morgan, so we're going to have to use her sister, Sore, as her mom. This will go by pretty fast because we're pretty much doing the same thing, but we're going to reuse our textures from Liv, but cut out a heart shape for the leotard instead. So this will be pretty easy. Are you ready to do this? Let's go. All right, for the heels, we're going to just change the base color of the red boots to black. For the leotard, we're going to recolor the original texture with a pitch black to a lighter black. Then cut out the heart shape at B-Ridge Studio. Pretty easy, right? For the stockings and sleeves, we're going to image the judge to change the hue of the stockings to that Morgan purplish pink color like a balloon. Then on the top half of this layer, where the sleeves are, change the color to a fleshy orange. The feathers are pretty much done already, but if you want to add more feathers, then go ahead. Boom! Now we're more than halfway done. So, for the wings on the back, take Lil's bat wings and change their color to black outside and pink inside. Alright, now for the last part, the wings on the head. This time we're actually going to make the wings on the head for Morgan's outfit. Go to the accessory tab to make two rabbit ears so you can place each one on the side of the head. We're going to use its texture with the bat wings from before and place them like this. Then resize the bat wing ears to your liking and there we go. Finally, we clean up our texture work and enjoy our hard work. Both outfits look really awesome. Hmm. I wonder who would win a good old fashioned cat fight. Yeah, yeah, cat fight. <laughs> Between Kimmy and Sora. Or who would win a. Say it with me. Later. Three, two, one. Photo shoot. わかったお姉さん私のために踊ってエッチエッチあなたは言っていますか わかったお姉さん私のために踊って
Phew, that was a lot of editing for a video, especially at the beginning of the video. I had a lot of fun doing this, and I wanted to make this video for Halloween, but with all the over-editing and learning more about 3D animations, it took me a lot longer than expected. I'm very happy with how this video turned out, to be honest. I enjoy making it, and I hope you enjoy it too. I have been pushing myself to get 500 subs this year, and I recently got sick. Um, half of my skull feels really numb. Is that... Normal? Well, anyways, I'm happy to say I made it to 271 subs because of all of you, and I wouldn't be here without any of you right now. So, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. However, I think I should take it a little bit easier from now on. After this next video that I'm already working on, I'll be working on some projects that I've been dying to make. Don't worry, Jet Set Radio community. I'm working on the next part of the Blender animation with B and the crew. I can't wait to show you what I can do. But it's time to wrap today's video, so if you like the video, then hit like. If not, then tell me how can I improve. If you like my content and you want to see my future videos, then hit subscribe. If you actually want to be notified, then hit that bell. If you have an idea who would be next for a digital drip episode, tell me in the comments. I love reading the comments. Also, I have a Reddit page and we have 12 members. Yahoo! You're more than welcome to join and post your own art and stuff as, as long as it's related to something about video games and anime. We need some fan art for the community one day. I would like some fan art for the channel one day, but I know that's a bit far away from now. Haha, <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. I need to say that without Fire Generation website, this video wouldn't turn out so good. They got all kinds of cool information about fighting games, lore, artwork, and cool gifs too. Check it out sometime, I'll put down a link for their website in the description. Alright, I think that's it for now. I hope you have a great day today, and I'll see you next time. Hopefully the next video will come out a lot sooner than I think it is. Alright, one more time.